Here we're going to talk about a particular method in computational chemistry, namely the Hartree-Fock self-consistent field method. It's a way to solve the Schrodinger equation for systems that have more than one electron, which is virtually all the systems that chemists are interested in. And here's the big picture, what you do uh, in the Hartree-Fock uh, self-consistent field method. Uh, you consider one electron at a time. Oh, that means you can solve the Schrodinger equation exactly because you're only having one electron even though there are lots of electrons in the system. So you just consider one electron and then you hold all the other electrons fixed. Those electrons are just sitting there. They're not contributing to the uh, kinetic energy of the uh, system or anything. They're just fixed. They're not moving. They do contribute, however, a charge interaction because they are charged, but they're fixed charges, and that contributes just to the coulombic. So what you do is you have an average field of negative charge from all those electrons that are just hanging around, not moving. Then you solve the Schrodinger equation for that one electron in the presence of the fixed other electrons. Okay, and then you have a wave function for that one electron. Then you go to a next electron and you hold all the other electrons fixed, including the one you just um, you just uh, solved to get a better one. Then you get the that a better solution for that electron. Then you go to the next electron, holding all the others fixed, and so on. And so you cycle through all the electrons, doing one at a time, all the others fixed. And as you do that, you get a wave function for each electron which is better, but then you have to do it again because when you uh, did, say, the first electron, the second electron had one wave function, but then when you did the second electron, that wave function changed, so you got to go back and do the calculation for the first electron <laughs> because the second electron changed and so on. So you have to cycle through several times, and you keep cycling through until the energy you calculate uh, for the next cycle does not change very much by some predetermined amount. And there, then you solve the Schrodinger equation just by cycling through these electrons. Essentially, you're doing the one electron solution of the Schrodinger equation every, uh, every time and holding the others fixed. Now, this is implemented in several computer programs. And uh, the computer program I have on my computer is a proprietary one. It's uh, is called Hyper. And I'll show you uh, briefly how you use uh, Hyperchem. All right, so here's uh, Hyperchem. Uh, I'm going to build an atom or build a molecule which will just be a um, atom of helium. So there's helium, and now I click here, and there is my helium atom, my one single helium atom. And uh, maybe we don't like how that displays, so just <laughs> for fun, we can uh, let's see, uh, make uh, make it like a sphere. Yeah. Oh wow, so that looks a lot better. Yeah. So there's the helium. <laughs> Note that this is an artist's conception of the helium atom. Now we're going to do is say, okay, I want to set up that calculation. This ab initio is another name for uh, the Hartree-Fock self-consistent field method. This gives the uh, number of Gaussians. I'm going to use uh, 631G star star, which I think has uh, for helium um, probably about 10 Gaussian functions. So I'm going to approximate the um, wave functions for the helium as uh, a combination of these Gaussian functions. And uh, let's see what happens. So I set that up. Now I'm going to do a single, uh, I'm going to compute the energy of the helium molecule at that point. And now it's done with the calculation. I don't know if you probably see this, but, um, oh shoot, it just, uh, a stupid program. So I m uh, made this, made the program not full screen and it erased the uh, data. So I have to compute it again, sorry. Well, it doesn't look like <laughs> the uh, Hypercam program is compatible with my recording and my Camtasia studio that I'm using to record these lectures. So just let me say that Hypercam gave a, a energy, and this is the Hartree-Fock self-consistent field method. It gave an energy <clears throat> of the helium atom of minus 1.245 times 10 to the minus 17th joule. All right, so that's what you got for that self-consistent field method. Now remember that the exact uh, energy of the helium atom um, from experiment is minus 1.266 times 10 to the minus 17th. 
Oh, so we got pretty close uh, with the self-consistent field by making the bad assumption that the uh, the orbitals are like uh, Gaussian functions. Huh. And note that also because this is the variation method, the energy we calculate from the variation method is greater than that uh, predicted by the, or uh, greater than that experimentally measured, the exact energy. Okay, so that's the Hartree-Fox self-consistent field method.